if you had a crowd of like a thousand people, right, and each of them was wearing a black shirt, it would be a lot harder to stand out in that crowd if you was just another person wearing a black shirt too. So naturally, you might switch it to a yellow shirt or some other color that'll help you stand out from everybody else, right? But because everybody else in the crowd is looking to stand out just like you are, before you know it, you'll take a look around and everybody's going to be wearing a yellow shirt just like you. And this game is forever changing. It's always evolving. So getting complacent and we're doing the same things over and over it's it's just gonna it's gonna hurt your music it's gonna hurt your marketing what's good and welcome to indie leverage back with another episode of let's talk about it where we're on a search for the best advice we can find for independent artists and nowadays, as you probably know, we need so much more than just great music. Between the content creation, branding, and marketing, we're responsible for wearing more hats than ever before. So let's talk about it. The first clip I'm going to pull up is from OD Songwriter, and he says that artists that lip sync to their music are doing content creation all wrong. You aren't going to blow up anymore by lip syncing over your original song on a TikTok post. You can't just post whatever you want. You look at the bigger TikTokers that have done this, and it appears that they are doing this exact same thing. If you really analyze deeper, they're doing something in each of the posts that you may not be recognizing. That is, they're telling a story. People don't want to hear, this song changed my life. I wrote the song and it's, it means so much to me. This is TikTok. No one really cares about you. They care about themselves. And if you understand this, then it's crafting your story of your song in a visual way, still lip syncing, and then communicating it in a very universal way that people connect with. This is what blows up careers. This is what's blown up a ton of careers on TikTok and you've seen it. And by doing this consistently, this is what builds a brand for you and your music. Make sure you're telling stories. Make sure that story points back to you as a brand. Okay, and, and this ain't no brand new concept, y'all. If you've watched any of my other videos before, then you know I'm a huge advocate for telling stories in your promotion. And even though he was being specific about how viewers on TikTok don't care about your song, and you know they're only interested in what's in it for them but this is something that you'll find true on all the different platforms and really if you pay attention to your own habits and if you look at how you interact with the content that pops up on your own page then you know you probably have a better understanding of how people will be interacting with your content you feel me like would you scroll past what you're putting out telling an engaging story not only entertains your audience but it shows depth to your brand and it gives some insight into you know who you are as an artist and as a person but i feel like it'll allow you to promote your music in a way that that never feels really like promotion but simply <laughs> lip syncing to your music is is really just boring man and it took a minute for me to to realize that for myself like damn like why, why are my numbers dropping, like, bro? Because look at what you're doing. And even if you have an amazing song, the chances of it being so amazing that someone stops their endless scrolling just to watch you lip sync to it with some boring video, I mean, you know, the chances are pretty small. And I'm not saying it's easy to come up with some creative way to tell a story behind your music, but it's not really supposed to be easy. If it was easy... Every artist would be blowing up, and it's kind of like what they say about the gym, that, you know, uh, if it was easy to be on a strict diet and to consistently lift weights, then everybody would be swole with a six-pack walking around, like, you know, but the thing is, with music marketing, even if it was easy, even if, you know, you found some creative and amazing way to tell a story while promoting your music, there's just so many other musicians out there that will end up replicating that same exact style that you put out, especially if it works, you know, which which it, it really isn't a bad thing. But taking 
easy out of the equation. The, the real goal is to find a creative way to captivate your audience, you know, and that's what will truly set you apart from every other artist out there. And, you know, you notice he said, tell the story in a way that that's visually appealing, you know, for for a while. You can get away with lip sync into your song and putting some text throughout the video to tell a story. But like I was saying, man, to so many artists, uh, this is the strategy that that they're relying on, that they're using. And when it started to get played out and expected by people, they ain't really switch it up because this type of video is I don't know. This, this type of video is something that viewers, they just see over and over. They've seen it countless times. And it's all over the For You page, which means they're just scrolling past it. But I'm going to put it like this. Like, it would, it would be really hard for you to um, stand out from the crowd. If you had a crowd of, like, a thousand people, right, and each of them was wearing a black shirt, it would be a lot harder to stand out in that crowd if you was just another person wearing a black shirt, too. So naturally, you might switch it to a yellow shirt or some other color that will help you stand out from everybody else, right? But because everybody else in the crowd is looking to stand out just like you are, before you know it, you'll take a look around and everybody's going to be wearing a yellow shirt just like you. And this game is forever changing. It's always evolving. So getting complacent with doing the same things over and over, it's, it's just going gonna, gonna to hurt your music. It's going to hurt your marketing. But even if you do find something that works for you, you won't be able to continue to do it forever. And of course, you want to... Do what you can do while it works, but when you notice that something isn't as effective as it was or it stops working altogether, that's when it's time to pivot, you feel me, and to come up with a, a better course of action. Of course, you want to double down on any strategies that are working for you, but don't be afraid to experiment with other strategies along with the one that's currently working. That way, if there happens to be like uh, some kind of change in the strategy that you were using, it no longer works. You've already started to experiment with some other marketing strategies that could be hopefully there to take its place. But um, rarely is it one specific marketing strategy anyways that blows an artist up. Like it's, it's usually using multiple strategies and having them work together and creating a machine that is constantly pushing the artist brands forward. Ugh, it's just embarrassing Bradley I mean seriously I told you not to call me that my name is Vortex who tells people they're a f***ing rapper when they don't even release any f***ing music I'm finna pop off man I'm gonna Where's be famous your music, then? give me one song by the almighty Vortex that I can actually show people so I don't feel Whatever. like such a f***ing loser when I say my boyfriend's Whatever. a f***ing rapper yeah. always yeah. making a uh, fool of yourself this girl out really public. tried to hurt my feelings see this this is exactly what I'm talking tell them about. bring us two checks I won't pay for what you get wow yeah. seriously Distro Kid, the best way to get your music on all streaming platforms for only 40 bucks a year. Enjoy 7% off on your first year by clicking our VIP referral link down in the description and get verified on Spotify and become the artist that you claim to be. Girl, I'm so happy you finally broke up with that loser. You deserve so much better. What? What happened? Oh my God, you gotta be kidding me. Let's go ahead and move on to our next clip. A lot of artists have people under the impression that because they have a huge following or some, some large social media presence, that it automatically means they have a lot of money. Joey Dean gives us three tips on how to turn an audience into a core fan base that will actually stream your music. I'm just gonna say it. Just because a musician has a lot of followers does not mean they get a lot of streams on their music. We've all seen it. People with hundreds of thousands of followers don't have the numbers you'd think that they have reflected on their Spotify account. And this is true adversely. An artist doesn't need to go viral to get a lot of streams on their music. If you're struggling to convert your following to streams on your music, here are three massive perspective shifts to improve your content and increase your opportunity of converting your following to streams. Tip number one, focus on making value-based content, not viral 
viral content. It can be said that viral content is more general, more generic, that people consume it passively. When you create value-based content, you create content that is rooted in the perspective of your ideal fan. Because it's more specific, it is not going to have as wide of an appeal, but it's going to connect really deeply with the people you want to speak to. Tip two, you want to have core fans. You don't want to have passive fans. You want people who are going to listen to your music five times in a row, not listen to 20% of the song and then click off. When you create viral content that is attractive to a lot of different people, it doesn't necessarily mean people that are attracted to the piece of content are attracted to your music. When you create value-based content that has a specific message that speaks to very specific groups of people, you create core fans who fall in love with you and your music. Tip three, you want to focus on meaningful sustainability, not algorithmic exhaustion. You don't want to upload so much and follow all the trends and use the trending sounds and do what everyone says you should be doing to the point that you get so burnt out and so exhausted that you are not focusing anymore on your music and your message. You want to know what you're saying, what you're sharing, and who you're connecting with it makes both you and your audience feel good. This creates sustainability and increases the opportunity that you're going to connect with the core audience, which is going to increase your streams over time. I mean, yeah, man, at the end of the day, I don't know about you guys, but I want to gain more streams on my music. Of course, I'd love to have millions of likes and followers, but if you told me that I had to choose between a million streams on a song or a million views on a TikTok video, and it had to be an either or type of situation, I mean, I'd have to go with the million streams on a song every time. What's the point of getting a whole bunch of views on any platform if it doesn't lead back to our music. You feel me? Like, going viral just for the sake of going viral isn't always going to be a good thing. And he said that while some artists that go viral can't convert their attention over to their streams, there, you know, there's some artists who aren't necessarily going viral, but they're still managing to bring an audience that they do have, that they do start to cultivate. They bring, they're bringing them over to a platforms like Spotify and Apple Music to stream their music. So creating an actual fan base should be the ultimate goal, not going viral, not just having an audience that's looking at you for one moment and then swipe up to another video in the next moment. You don't want to be some trend, you feel me? And while it would be, you know, great for an artist to have a video go viral, I feel like, I don't know, it would it would just be better um, to have a value-based piece of content like, like he was saying, go viral. You don't want to just put something out there that doesn't even come back to you as an artist. A value-based piece of content will always be able to serve the audience that it's meant for. And on top of that, it still has the potential to go viral. Like, th that's not saying that, oh, well, it's either or you have to. But all I'm saying, those the, the dances and the things that just don't even fit your brand, whatever it is, whatever's trending now, because it changes like that. Whatever is trending at that moment, don't just try to fit into it if it doesn't fit with your brand. Because then how how can you even say that you're authentic? So, I mean, I definitely feel like going viral shouldn't be... Your, your goal necessarily, bringing value to your viewers in every video will serve you so much better than chasing that next trend. Because let's say you have a song take off because you went viral on one of these platforms, right? And if it's used as um, just a sound and it's just a part of the current trend, it's not necessarily going to translate to having an audience that will continue to listen to the music that you release going forward. You feel me? And... He even said that people are consuming this content passively and that it don't even resonate or connect with them enough to be memorable. So it all comes down to you thinking of your ideal fan first when you're making your content. Who are the type of people that would relate to you and your music? What are some of the things that would entertain them? What do they like? What do they find interesting and engaging? And a lot of these answers can come from trial and error. You don't have to be perfect on the first swing you know the point is for you to take as many swings as you can when he said that people can be attracted to your content but not necessarily be attracted to your music it's because people won't even correlate the two things together if there isn't some kind of consistency to it and understanding what your brand and what your music represents can help you figure out what kind of content you should be creating in the first place 
So in so many ways, I feel like it's easier to create content that way instead of trying to come up with, you know, some, something or follow something that you hope will be appealing to everybody. You could be niching down and start making content directly for your ideal fan. And when you're chasing the current trends and you're doing random things to go viral, even when they don't align with you or your music or your brand, I feel like. That's when you get the moniker of, you know, like a TikTok artist or a YouTube artist. Nothing against, I guess, anybody who's aspiring to be that. But, uh, you know, like what my point was that you're not really standing behind your brand or your art. You're really standing behind these platforms and you're posting whatever you feel is best for these platforms at that time. And I'm not saying, obviously, you can't ever do anything that's trending or you're some sellout or whatever. I'm saying you should only be doing things that, like I said, they align with your brand. And it can just be an icing on top of the cake when you you happen to come across a trend that goes with what you already represent. But the majority of your content, like Buddy was saying, needs to come from a place of value. And that can naturally cultivate a group of people and a community that will want to go from TikTok to Spotify or whatever platform they stream music on. Because if you want to go viral just for going viral, I mean, you might as well just be a content creator. And obviously, I ain't throwing no shade by saying just, but I'm saying if you just trying to go viral, there are a lot of easier ways to do that than by being a music artist. You feel me? And I know it can be easy to get caught up in chasing views and likes or whatever other metric that you want to look at. But if you're anything like me, this all, you know, it comes back to the music and you want everything to come back to you and your brand as an artist. So as easy as it is to get caught up in what is trending and what you think might go viral, it's so much more rewarding to make the content that is true to you and your music. And also, you know, that's true to the emotions that your music makes people feel. But actually, while we're on the subject of creating valuable content, in this next clip from Alex Hermosi, he explains how social media is dead and how we're now in the age of something new. Social media is dead. Media is all that's left. Let me explain. Right now, as you're scrolling on here, probably a lot of the people, if you're anything like me, are people that I don't actually know socially. And so what's happened, if, especially on like the Instagrams and the YouTubes, et cetera, people aren't sending pictures of their food in there, their vacation that they want on, or some people are, but those aren't the people who have the big following. It's the people that are just creating valuable content, which means that they went from being social or personal media to just media. And so if we think about that evolution over time, we can think about how we adjust the content that we create in order to sell stuff, build our audiences, et cetera. Bro, that's actually like a really interesting way to look at all of this. And for the longest time, social media really was just about engaging with the people that you know in real life. And slowly but surely, it really, it just started to feel I mean, it really just has become more about what we like and what we naturally are entertained by. Looking at it like that, we are, as an artist, we have our own media outlets in our pockets. And YouTube even has it where you can create multiple channels under one account that all exist as their own separate thing. And for the longest time, I mean, companies would pay so much money to get their products and their brands marketed on TV so that they can get in front of all those people. And they would have so much of their budget set aside because they wanted to market to where all the attention was. And now things have shifted so drastically that social media really is the new media. But like bro was saying, that completely shifts the way that we can create our content now. We all have an opportunity to not only market our products for free, but these platforms will even pay you to release content and market your products. And I know I'm saying products, obviously, that's going to be your music if you didn't pick that up. But once you've grown your audience, why would you ever limit what you have to offer to only music? And I'm not talking about, you know, your typical merch like shirts and hats or whatever. Of course, it's a good idea to have stuff like that, too. But you could think of so many different products that could align with your brand. And if you get creative, you could really think outside of the box. And now we have our own media outlets in our pockets to grow an audience as large as we can. 
and not just some audience that's watching from the sidelines, but an engaged group of people that love and support what you do. I mean, I personally feel like it's literally the best time in history to be an artist. And I might be biased because, you know, this is the only time that, that I've ever known is, is the time that we're in right now. But <laughs> just looking back at how it used to be, you feel me? And then looking at all of the resources and the tools that we have right now. And yeah, because the barrier to entry is so low, we have more competition than ever before. But why is that a bad thing? I mean, as music lovers, I feel like we should love the fact that more people have the ability to share their gifts than ever before. Plus, I mean, a little competition is good for you, right? I don't know about y'all, but that, that kind of helps motivate me. If all of this was easy, you wouldn't have anything to appreciate once you actually find the success you're looking for. But I'm going to go ahead and pull up this next clip with Adam Ivey. And he tells us what would happen if Spotify paid us one cent for every stream a penny for a stream could you imagine what is a fair rate per stream on spotify the average response on that was between one cent and five cents which uh, break that down for the people insanely unsustainable spotify did 12 billion dollars in 2022 they have over 60,000 songs uploaded a day. They have over 900 million streams a month. If Spotify paid one cent for every stream that comes through their systems, they would be in the red about $20 billion. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> man, this, this man said 900 million streams a month. So I feel like most of us have heard the whole 60,000 streams uploaded a day or whatever, but 900 million streams a month. And it'd be interesting to see if as more and more songs are uploaded every single day, if the average monthly stream count increases as well, because I would guess that it doesn't. Like, not on a drastic level, at least. Of course, Spotify is always going to try to acquire more and more listeners and subscribers for the platform, but... Is it comparable to the amount of new songs that are uploaded every single day? Because that number has consistently increased over the years. And now with AI music becoming a thing, I can see the numbers of the number of uploaded songs to Spotify be even more like it's increasing even more drastically than before. And it obviously would never make sense for Spotify to pay us a penny for a stream. I mean, come on. But seeing it broken down like this on a business level, it really does make sense. And uh, it makes it much more clear that that type of pay structure just would never work. But man, almost a billion streams a month. That's, that's crazy, man. If you're a true musicpreneur, then I'd like to offer you a lifeline and invite you to a one-on-one -on -one session with me that we'll treat like your own personal mastermind, where I'll answer any questions and we can strategize actionable steps tailored to your unique situation. I'm only opening up a limited number of slots each month, so if you'd like to apply, you can visit www.indieleverage.com slash live call. And don't worry, I put the link down in the description for you. So for now, let's get back to the video. But anyways, let's go ahead and wrap this up with our last clip of the day. Bobby Borg explains the three attributes of a successful and popular song. So what are three attributes of a successful popular song? Well, number one would be the structure. Does it have a balance between predictability and surprise? If something is too predictable, it gets boring. And if it's too surprising, it gets confusing. So something in between those two things. Number two, the melody. Is it unique? Does it have a memorable humback factor? Do you think you're gonna remember this after the fact? And number three would be the lyric. Is the lyric relatable and is it easy to understand? Sometimes even repetition in a, in a lyric, especially in the chorus, is extremely helpful because it helps people to really grab on or to be hooked by something in particular. Okay. So we had uh, attribute number one where it's a balance between what a listener is already used to hearing and something that they've never heard before. And then next was the the melody. Melody has to be catchy enough to get stuck in the listener's head. And then lastly, are the lyrics, uh, are the lyrics powerful enough and relatable enough to form a connection between you know your music and the listener? And that kind of ties into uh, what I was talking about earlier 
about how you don't want to make videos that are just chasing what's viral and what's currently trending. But I do feel like it's also important to make music for the people, not only by staying up to date what sound is currently doing well, but also taking a look at your existing fan base and the potential fan base, I guess, that your music would attract. You know, like, what do they respond to? What are the, what are the things that they like? If you've had a few songs that have already proven to be successful within your niche, then how could you replicate that? And I'm not saying just like copy and paste from your last song to your next song, but you can even use those three attributes that that was just listed in that video and think about how it correlates with the music that you've released and that did well in the past. And it's okay if you haven't had a song reach hundreds of thousands or millions of streams yet. If your music is consistently doing a thousand streams in the first month of release, and then you release a song that gets like 5,000 streams in its first month of release, then that's an indicator that one, you know, you made a song that people respond to. And then two, you know, you might have a formula to, to make your next songs. And that's where you can incorporate new things and experiment with new sounds and ideas using what has already proven to work as your foundation. And then, you know, you could tweak it little by little as you go. And it's, it's not to reach any specific destination. This isn't like some finish line that you're trying to get to. Perfecting your craft is a never-ending journey, I feel like. And I would argue that striving to create a popular song is nowhere near the same as trying to create a viral video. Because you could take a video like that and break down the common attributes that you see in popular music. And then you can use your own unique sound and voice to put your own little spin on it. So it's okay if you want to make music for yourself and that you personally connect with. I mean, in fact, that's that's what I encourage you to make, especially when you're starting out. So I'm not I'm not saying that you ignore that aspect of the creation process. What I'm saying is that it's important to consider your audience when you're creating your music. And this concept holds true whether you have an audience already or if you're just starting out from scratch and you don't have a single fan. And creating music that will naturally resonate with your ideal fan, it sounds good and all that, but what if an artist doesn't know what their sound is? Like, what type of person that would be considered for their ideal fan? I mean, it would be a little bit more difficult because the artist hasn't found their sound yet, but by no means am I saying that once you find a particular style of music, or a particular topic for a song that you're stuck in some sort of box where that's the only type of music you can create. Finding your sound is so much more than making music about the same topics over and over. When you look at the most established artists that have their own unique sound, no matter what the subject matter is of the song, you'll be able to hear their sound on it. You'll be able to pinpoint like, okay, that's so-and-so. And usually I'd say that an artist shouldn't look at, you know, whatever famous superstar artist as a reference for how they move in their own careers. But when it comes to how virtually every major successful artist has a unique sound that once it's heard is easy to pinpoint. I mean, I feel like every artist has a different journey to finding their sound, but some artists find it quicker than others. And some artists might take longer to find their sound. But once they do, they might be able to perfect it a lot faster than others. So the truth of the matter is, the only way you're going to be able to find your unique sound and your unique voice is by taking that first step and then continuing to push the limits on what, what kind of music you make. And with that original goal of wanting to make music that you can connect with personally, but that you also think a listener would connect with as well. And as easy as all this sounds, being able to objectively critique your own music like that is a skill that takes, I mean, it takes a long time to hone, at least from, from my perspective and my experience has. But no matter how good you are at critiquing your own music and looking at it from an objective perspective, it's gonna be beneficial for you to have a group of trusted people in your corner, you know, and they'll be able to give you that unfiltered and honest advice or opinion on your music that you can't even put a price on it, man. And don't just have people that have a similar taste in music um, listen to your work. You know, don't have, 
if you make hip hop, don't just have people that listen to hip hop listen to it. I've personally found it more helpful to go and get a variety of people that have different tastes of music. And obviously they still need to be people that'll keep it a buck with you and they won't hold back how they really feel, trying to spare your feelings or something like that. But it's always good to get several perspectives for something like this. I feel like that's why you hear that um, like TV shows get a group of viewers with different ages and different genders and different interests and stuff like that. And they'll put them all together in this focus group and then they'll have them watch whatever episode or preview of a TV show that they're trying to push and then they'll get each of their opinions. So even as you're gaining more fans, you know, if you get a new follower, give the profile a quick preview. And depending on how fast you're growing, obviously, you know, that's not going to be too realistic for long. But when you get a chance, just, you know, take a look at somebody's profile. And it's, it's just a good habit to check in with the fan base that you are growing. Try to find out any connections or correlations between one fan base and another. The better you understand who your audience is, the better you'll understand what type of music and content that you should be creating. But um, that's all I got for y'all, man. This has been episode number three of Let's Talk About It. If you're not already, man, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. You get new episodes every single week, along with plenty of other videos where I keep you up to date with new tools, artist news, and resources covering things like marketing, branding, content creation, and everything else that we need as independent artists to survive. But until next time, y'all keep pushing cuz... We starting to gain some leverage. I can't really put myself on. Cause I can't settle for average. I made it a habit of doing what they couldn't get done. What, you still here? You must not know a video to watch next or something, huh? All right, man. I got you, bro. But you gonna have to get up out of my studio. Cause what the? got me showing up. You can keep your keep on the gate if they won't let me in. Yeah. We balancing the scales now. We got them scared, yeah. We been gaining leverage. What I need a handout for?